जीते गई एटा लमो यात्रा हो ते यात्रा में स्प्रिचुअल स्प्रिट आध्यात्मिक अंतस्करण म इसमें एट धार्मिक अंधोकरण लाइनस कर खोज् सकारात्मक पक्ष के बने आध्यात्मिक संरचना हमी मन में आत्मसात गयों सज धे सकारात्मक परिणाम में पुग्न सकता Being the harder to man was passed away on December 1st, 2012, at the age of 78. He was truly a man of purity and altruism, often praised for his goodness, and long considered a saintly, Gandhi-like figure in Nepalese politics. As a leader of the Nepali Congress Party, he was never swayed by any of the temptations that all too often threaten political fairness. Many politicians become personally rich through politics, but not him. And his humanitarian credentials were impeccable. He was born in 1933 AD in the poor village of Jule in the Dorka district of Nepal. After his mother died while he was still a young child, his father took him to Darjeeling, a beautiful city in the northeast India, where he got a good education. When he was grown, he returned to his village, sent by his father to reclaim their ancestral property. He was troubled by the widespread poverty he saw in Jule, so he decided to remain there and do what he could to help make things better for the people. Education was top on his list of priorities, and he began tutoring the village children. In no time, he had earned popularity as Master Bean Bahada in and around the village. He built two schools and traveled as far as Kalampong, Darjeeling to procure textbooks for his students. After first calling him master or teacher, the people of his village started calling him Mantri when he became minister of law. And finally, in later years, He was called Fudo Manche or Big Man because of the immeasurable good he was able to do. His political career began in 1949 and as a politician he was arrested and imprisoned many times because of his efforts for democracy. After one jail sentence, he was released to find that his wife had run away to marry someone else. But rather than getting angry, he gave her his blessings all throughout his many years in politics he displayed a rare set of ethics that he never compromised he never took bribes he never gave in to requests for nepotism or other favors without merit he was completely unselfish and cared very much for the well-being of all nepalese people he gave his entire life for his people and took nothing for himself About 15 years ago also, for example, when all members of parliament in Nepal were given a new jeep, he did not accept one. And according to popular legend, the day that he was relieved of his duty as minister of law, he did not even have enough bus fare to get home. Bean Bahada never bought a house of his own, but stayed at his sister's house whenever he was in Kathmandu. During the last 15 years of his life, he lived in a small room given to him by the NC leader Radhe Shyam Adhikari in Tarpagorn, where he owned nothing beyond the barest of necessities. Whenever he visited his native village, his sister-in-law Dana Kumari cooked for him and gave him a place to sleep in her very humble house. This she did for 40 years, and when she learned the news of his death, The 63-year-old Dana Kumari was shocked beyond belief. He was a very likable, very humble and frank man. What we need to keep in our mind about this unique man is the legacy he's left of having refused to succumb to greed or corruption. All Nepalese people need to hope that the upcoming politicians follow him in his footsteps. Bean Bahada Tamang was given a national funeral service where existing Honorable Prime Minister Babram Bhattarai was present. 
Nepali Congress Party President Sushil Koirala honored him with a party flag. He had no home to call his own but every Nepali citizen had him as a leader and protector and he will always be remembered.